Okay, yes, you're back on WoW Radio, although you didn't actually go anywhere. It always confuses me when people on the radio say that. You're back with me. You're back with you. No, you're not. You didn't actually go anywhere in the first place. Idiot. Okay. This is Blue Please with Total Biscuit, and I'm ranting more than usual today. That's the way to go. I've got 50 minutes to fill with ranting. Of course, a few more features to come. Ask the Murloc and Rap in the forums, of course, and the Imbecile of the Week. Yeah. All right. Now, interesting issue came up. One of the big things I've always liked about World of Warcraft is that there is no big penalty for dying. And as far as I'm concerned, that is fabulous. And the reason is this. I used to play a MUD back in my younger days, when I was about, oh, uh, what? How long ago was that been? I must have been 13. That's seven years ago now, nearly eight years ago. I was playing a MUD, and it was based on Lord of the Rings. And it's commonly accepted that it's the best Lord of the Rings Tolkien-based MUD on the web. And it was called Moom, the Multi-Users in Middle-Earth. And let me tell you this, it was a hardcore game. No quests. No quests at all. You ground. Basically, it was one big grind up to level 100. And there was only one guy that ever made it to level 100. And his name was Norzu. And he played constantly. And it took him five years. This game has been going at least for ten years now, I believe. It's a Telnet-based game if you want to try it out. It's good fun. But it is a grind and a half. And one of the big things about it, and often one of the big things with MUDs, was this. When you died, you lost the level. And you can imagine, a level on Moon took, let's see, say you're playing a medium level character. A level on Moon would take you... Week, maybe? Week of solid grinding? Yeah, that sounds about right. A week. In the time that I played, and I played for around three years, I had two characters at level 20. And I never got any higher than that. And the reason is... Every time I almost got to 21, I died. When I died, I lost my level again. And that was one of the most infuriating feelings I've ever had. It's a kick in the arse to see all your work. And effectively, it was work. It was a a good lot of fun. It was enjoyable because I was playing with friends. But it was still work. It was still grinding. To see that go down the pan because of one mistake. Death penalties. Horrible. Horrible inclusion, as far as I'm concerned. And what's worse is that people are actually suggesting that these be brought into World of Warcraft. And this is the one, the only reason I've really played World of Warcraft over any other MMORPG is the lack of death penalty. Because in reality, there's not a lot, especially in a PvP orientated server, that you can do about dying a lot of the time. Some of the time, yes, you could be more careful, but a mob death, you take damage to your equipment, and there's the time running back. That is enough. PvP, it's a pride thing. You don't like dying to people because, well, it sucks, and they have bested you, and that is a pride issue, and you want to get back in the fight and kick them in the arse. And I say arse with an R, folks. And I read this horrible post where someone suggested a hardcore server. And if you've ever played Diablo 2, you know exactly what hardcore means in the concept of a Blizzard game. What hardcore means is one life. And that is it. One single life. And I thought, wow. You're crazy. What level are you going to get up to with one life? And when you lose your life, you lose your character. You die permanently. The same principle as if you're a Jedi on Star Wars Galaxies. You die, you lose your Jedi. I thought, this guy's insane! Who would play that? I mean, that's crazy. Obviously, it would have to be PvE, because if it was PvP, you'd kill off the population so fast. But even in PvE, you'd have to be so damn careful. There are times when you think, you're fine, it's all good. For instance, 
yesterday, I was doing what I've dubbed Mini Zulfarak. If you've ever been to Hinterlands, you will notice that there is a large troll temple there filled with elites. And it's actually quite a bit harder than Zulfarak in some ways. And at the top of that, you actually get the mallet. Well, you get the mallet enchanted on the altar to go to Zulfarak and summon that big Hydra bastard in the pool. Now, I went up there with a friend, me and a Shadow Priest. I'm a level 49 mage, he's a level 51 Shadow Priest. We all went up there, and we spent about an hour and a half getting to the top of this temple. Tough encounter, extremely hard, because it was all elite. So, it was a slow progress, but we got up there, and we had a quest, and that quest was one of the new, might, I, I might add, fantastic Hinterlands quests. And you had to get this guy's skeleton and skull who'd been executed up there. And it said, oh, go into the pit of slime and kill the slimes, so you'll find them there. Go into the pit of wolves, so you'll find it there. So I thought, okay. Right, so we went up. There's three level 51 elite wolves. And I thought, okay, we can take them. Polly one, I'll tank one, you tank the other. We'll be fine. Okay. So I went in. Aggro the wolf. Combustion Pyroblast. The next thing I know, four level 50 elite blood drinkers appear behind me. And I notice my health decreasing very rapidly. I'm screaming down team speak at this point. Get out of there, for God's sake! They're, nah, they're everywhere. Die. Now, can you explain to me why a hardcore PvP... Well, sorry, PvE server in which you have one life and one life alone would actually be a good idea when you've got encounters like that? You're insane! You are totally nuts. I kill you. I kid you not. You are totally insane. <sighs> now, people on the channel are saying, Mage Tank? Yeah, play a real mage. With a. Play a battle mage. Play an extreme fire mage. I can solo an elite of my level. I can solo an elite higher level than me. As long as it's yellow, I can solo it. So yes, that's a mage tank. I take one mage, Shadow Priest takes the other. Sorry, I take one wolf, he takes the other, and I pull him off the third wolf. And that's the way to go. It's a very nice little combination to play. Shadow Priest and Fire Mage. The DPS is obscene. It's brilliant, I love it. And especially with that lovely, lovely little ability called Vampiric Embrace. It's great! It's absolutely brilliant. The amount of damage you do, it's fantastic. Oh well. So the idea of this whole hardcore PvP is crazy. And it makes me wonder if people really engage their brain before using the internet or whether they're just after a more difficult experience. Ho oh, hum. Is there a solution? Certainly with PvE. Well, you can add more high level instances, but maybe a hardcore PvP server is the way to go. But let's not have this you die, you disappear kind of stuff. Not a good idea. Let's try something. What if you were to have a server? where all the mob strength was increased. No other change is necessary. All the strength is increased. You fight a mob, and fighting every single mob is like a silver elite. Fighting a silver elite is like fighting a gold elite. Fighting a gold elite is like fighting, I don't know, molten core mobs. Yeah, you want something hardcore? Go and play that. But to be quite honest, this whole hardcore PvP idea Taken from Diablo, of course. It's a really stupid idea. And no. Just no. They haven't thought that through. There are a lot of silly ideas when it comes to the World of Warcraft. And as we demonstrated earlier in No Cake News, people have this idea that because they're paying for the game, they can dictate where the game is going to go. And, my friends, they would be most certainly mistaken in that. Because... 
that's not the way it works, I'm afraid. No, it isn't. And it never will be. You pay the game, you pay for the game, because it's subscription-based, and it's evolving, and you're paying for service, staff, and bandwidth. That's the reason you pay, and it also keeps a few smack tars out. Although, I have to notice, it hasn't kept that many out, has it? They found ways in. The smack tards will filter in at every possible opportunity. Oh. Okay, I think it's time for a feature. I've blathered on quite long enough. And it's time to reintroduce the much loved and much loathed. Where's it button? Oh, yes. Ask the milk. Hey! Gotta love that button. I'll never get tired of that sound. Now, if you haven't tuned into the show before, the idea of Ask the Murloc is it's our little Blue Please problem section. Unfortunately, we couldn't find an agony ant to do it, so we found someone who would put the very definition of agony into agony ant. A Murloc. But not your normal, everyday gargling Murloc that sounds like this. <laughs> oh no, oh no, this Murloc has evolved. This is a high class Murloc. And that's all the worse. It really is. So, coming up right now, it's yet another instalment of Ask the Milk. Ask the Milk. Dear Murloc, I know that I'll get made fun of for this, but I have absolutely no clue what the latest Sticky is talking about. I don't know what how to rack valley is and have absolutely no idea what that post is talking about. Please help. Haha! It is I, the Moloch, come to wreak righteous fury and havoc on you all. Once I finish my cognac, yes, yes. Oh, my dear girl, which rock have you been living under recently? The introduction of Atrak Valley was big news. Okay, okay, just for you. Atrak Valley is a lovely, happy place, filled with wondrous treasures, perfect for the low-level player. Since your alliance, to get there, simply head north of that ghastly Terran Mill. Don't worry about the Terran Mill death guards, just run north. The guards at the entrance will take good care of you. Ha <laughs> ha! Ask the Murloc. Dear Murloc, I've only been playing WoW for a few months, and only been playing my priest for a few weeks. I did my first real group last night in the Dead Mines. This morning I'm wondering if you can offer me advice on how to control my aggro level? I seem to attract mobs like mad. Ah yes, the priest. Noblest of classes. Well, at least it's not a paladin. Ha! Mobs work very much like us. They appreciate kindness and loathe hostility. So the best way to keep mobs off you in instances is simply use your best heals on your group mates. The mobs will admire your selflessness and look upon you with respect. They may even offer you a selection of cheeses as a tribute. Assuming, of course, they're not cut in your ribbons first. Ha <laughs> ha! Ask the Murloc. Dear Murloc, here's a quick question that I'm sure you can help me with. How do I feed my pet? Well, well, this is a tricky one of no mistake. I'll have to squeeze my brain juices for this one. Mmm, delicious brain juice. I'm um, sorry, sorry, yes, yes, the question. This method works best with animals with sharp teeth. The best way to feed a pet is to make sure that it doesn't have to exert any effort in order to consume its delicious lunch. So take your tasty wool steak and insert your hand into the dangerous animal's mouth. Preferably your entire arm, since this works better. Then simply drop the steak directly into its digestive tract. If the animal appears not to appreciate this, it may be because it's got something stuck in its throat. To check whether or not this is the case, insert your entire head into the animal's mouth, making sure that you make patronizing noises in the process. It's the perfect way to make sure your pet gets a head start. Ha <laughs> ha! Now get out! We're going to play some kitten croquet. 